Will Tavion Thomas, Cam Rising, and Dalton Kincaid play versus Arizona? And who else is in for a big game? We're talking about it on today's Locked on Utes. You are Locked on Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Lockdown Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube. We'd love to interact with you guys on social media as well as in the YouTube comments. Today's episode is brought to you by Underdog. Sign up on underdogfantasy.com with the promo code Locked On and get your first deposit doubled up to $100. My name is JT Wistersill, former intern inside the University of Utah Athletic Department. Excited to be joined to preview this game a little bit more and specifically who's going to play for the Utes, who's not going to play, and who else is really in for a big game by ESPN 700's Porter Larson. Porter, it's been a bit since we've had you on so appreciate you coming on and with this game it's it's really interesting because you know last it's always hard with this utah football program to get injury updates so we never know who's really going to play we don't get anything unless it's season ending injuries honestly so it's always hard to know who is and who isn't going to play it's one of the difficult things in covering this team right yeah uh and that's that's how it goes right kyle said in the in the press conference he uh he's not going to give you anything more than than he's required to until someone gives him a good reason and sorry to break the news to you as a football coach and as a football team there's not a good reason to share that information yes. outside of right uh the, the the thing we ran into last week the broadcasters wanting to know that's that's really the only uh the only ex- explainable reason that you that and from a schematic and, and game planning perspective uh the head coach isn't going to do that especially uh, in situations like we saw last week and yeah, no official updates, but uh, I can tell you Cam's trending towards, you know, being able to, to give it a go. He frankly was trending towards that last mm-hmm. week, but uh, had, a, had a little bit of a, a setback late in the process. So uh, I'm expecting Cam to play, uh, you know, if, if they're maybe a little conservative with him, uh, you know, maybe less designed runs, maybe uh, if, if there's a two possession or more lead late in the game, I can see him him being taken out a little bit earlier. But uh, it is trending towards a start for Cam Rising. Tavion Thomas, it's the same story, right? It's, it's not uh, an availability injury thing. It's just about how he prepares and how uh, the team goes about handling that situation. I would be more surprised to see Dalton Kincaid uh, than I would to see Cam Rising. Dalton, uh, he's been beat up all year, man, just, yeah. just based on the, the action he's seeing, the, the targets he's getting. And... You know, if it were if it were a Pac-12 title, if it were a a, a big time game, maybe he plays through and and, and goes through some injuries and, and and you know plays through some things. I think he needs some rest, and I think the Utes can probably get by Arizona without him. Uh, obviously, that's a, that's a big target to to miss. But uh, yeah, I, I think Dalton's probably the more likely big time name that you see absent on Saturday. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how, you know, Cam's, it's obviously Cam's guy, and we've seen the chemistry develop with the other receivers, so it could be an opportunity for them to step up. And you talked about Cam. Yeah, I think that's going to be what we see is less of those designed runs. If it is fourth down, third and short, maybe instead of Cam running it, maybe they'll have Jalen run it. Maybe Jaquin. We don't know about, um, I should ask you one other person is, do you think Mackay Bernard plays in this game? Because it seemed like he was got out there a little bit, but didn't look completely right. Personally, I, I feel like he's going to play and give it another go, but what how, what are you thinking? Yeah, so the thing with with Makai, um, it sounds like he he had some stuff cleaned up a couple weeks yeah. ago uh, as far as like a scope uh, situation. I know they 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 won't get, get into specifics there, but the 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 reason that he he was limited last week was uh, apparently because of that. And and we we had heard that he'd been dealing with some lingering things through the beginning of the year. So I actually think the fact that you didn't see him last week is a good sign because he actually went in, got that stuff cleaned up, and and is now on the road to hopefully a hundred percent. Whereas before he was battling with some some lingering stuff, right? Some uh, probably some stuff from some previous injuries that was getting in the way of of some full range of motion. Uh, it sounds like they figured that out. It sounds like they've addressed it. And if if Mackay's limited. Uh, if, if he's not necessarily a, a featured back Saturday, I wouldn't be surprised, but I think you'll see him out on the field and, and, and at least getting a few reps. 
Yeah. And sticking with the kind of the running back room, it is interesting to see how the carries workload is going to shake out because we saw so much of Jalen and Jaquindon last week, and we still don't know what Tavion status is. Uh, Tavion did post um, about the, I believe you retweet quoted the tweet of the uniforms this week. Uh, so that's, I mean, it's always hard to read into what those things mean, but I would be surprised if we saw Tavion out there again this week. I hope we do personally, but I'd be surprised. So I expect it to be, even if Makai does play, like you said, maybe they want to ease him back into it. So I could kind of see a pretty Maybe Jalen leads the group and carries if I'm predicting it. Then Jaquindon and Makai are a very close second there. I just, I feel like they're not going to want to give Makai the lion's share of the carries in this one if he does go in. Like I said, I just, I would be surprised if we say Tavion, even though I really hope we do. Well, yeah, JT, if, if you go back to last week, uh, Kyle's press conference, he said, I think we figured out the running back room. And then Jalen Glover got the lion's, car- lion's share of the, the carries against Washington State. So, if you read into that, going into this one, I expect Jalen to to kind of be the featured back against Arizona. And yeah, I think with Tavion, it's it's up to how he's handled things publicly. Uh, it seems that he's a little bit more bought in, uh, mm-hmm. right? With, with him maybe getting, getting the message from Kyle Whittingham. Um, if he's able to translate that into practice, if he's able to translate that into the game, I do think he'll he'll see some reps. He'll get some carries. He's just too big, too talented to keep him off the field entirely, especially if he's now doing the things off the field that he has to do. And outside of that, yeah, I think Makai, you have to get him on the field, right? Whether it's mm-hmm. at running back, whether it's split out wide, Makai Bernard's a, a guy that, if healthy, has to be involved, right? You you cannot waste his versatility, his his talent. So. It, that's just based on on how available he is. If he's if he's feeling good, I think you'll you'll see the ball in his hands a lot. Uh, but I think I think Makai is probably a guy who you're going to see more and more as the season goes along. Yes. If you can get through Arizona uh, and, and let him kind of kind of heal up a little bit more, that's probably the the best best route. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. And you speaking of healing up, you already spoke about Dalton, and we'd be very surprised to see Dalton out there. Personally, I don't think we're going to see Dalton again until Oregon. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think it, it depends on you know how his his healing process goes. Uh, Dalton, he hasn't missed like any games in his college career. That's true. Right? <laughs> so if, if he's able to go, if he's able to go, I can tell you. That's a kid who's going to be campaigned for it, right? Mm-hmm. There's some guys who will just, you know, be passive and and, and listen to the training staff, and right, yeah. that's that's the smart thing to do. Uh, but some guys are going to campaign to get on the field, especially if it's not like a ligament injury, right? If yep. if you're just trying to get back through more of a, a hurt rather than injured, right? There's a difference between the two. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can campaign and, and try and get on on the field a little bit more. And with Dalton, he's one of the guys that'll do that now. If there's ligament damage, if there's a chance of re-injury, they're not going to fall for it. They're not going to let him get back on the field, as they should. But Dalton's one of the guys that that he's not going to be kept out uh, for, for much of anything, right? He's probably headed to the NFL after this year. Yes. Let's, be, let's be frank. So he's he's going to try and get back without jeopardizing, of course, his, uh, his future availability, his draft status. Uh, and... Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, especially if if they're able to get through Arizona. Uh, if we can go back to last week, I wouldn't be surprised to see a similar thing to Makai Bernard. If oh, Dalton yeah. dresses, mm-hmm. if Dalton dresses against uh, Colorado, Stanford, I wouldn't be surprised. Yep. But if he goes out and takes some reps, and, and you know, maybe Munir McLean is productive, maybe Logan Kendall is productive, then maybe Dalton doesn't have to to take as many reps, and they're a little bit more conservative with him in that regard. But I wouldn't be surprised to see him in uniform and maybe try and give it a go. That's a really good point because it's a great opportunity for, like you said, him to go through warmups, just see how he's feeling, just right. get the game day feels all that in. So I, I really like that as well. Use the Fox Sports broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they, if, I think if they're on site though, they'd be able to see that and be able to identify it. That might also help a little bit. It might. It might. And we both, like we said, we both think Cam Rising is going to play. We're going to talk about the day we think Cam is in for and the other players we think are going to step up to help this offense be productive potentially without Tavion Thomas and Dalton Kincaid in a moment. But first, want to talk to you guys a little bit more about Underdog Fantasy. This episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to spice up college football this season. Make sure you guys head over to the Underdog website, create your Pick'em account, and get to work. It's easy to play and available in over 30 states, including here in Utah. Just pick between two and five players 
across any team, not just that you don't just have to do Utah. You can do all kinds of mix and match. There's tons. You can go to the NFL. If you like Hendon Hooker this week, think he's in for a big game against Georgia. What a matchup that's going to be. Make sure you head over and take his over in passing yards or higher in passing yards for him. See if they will finish higher and lower. So that's the big one, higher or lower in a statistical total. So make sure you guys head over to underdog. It's one of the easiest fantasy to play games out there, and you can win cold, hard cash in a single game. Sign up for the promo code locked on. That's all caps, no space locked on and underdog will double your first deposit up to 100 dollars deposit 100 get a free 100 go to underdog fantasy or find the underdog fantasy app in the app store google play store and as well as get use that promo code locked on one word get in on college football pick them action today and one thing Utah fans are going to have the opportunity to do with that pick them action is look at a guy in cam rising who could be in for a big game because this arizona defense not very good so we could see another explosive outing by this offense even without dalton kincaid potentially and i think cam is going to play very well in this one i think we're going to see a lot of him and that's what's nice is if you get up big in this one maybe he doesn't have to play all four quarters because of the confidence you have in bryson i think a guy who's going to step up and have a really big game is money parks i think money parks we're so used to the one big catch right i think we're going to see him as a consistent presence throughout this game and i think he's going to go over 100 yards in this one and have not just one but two explosive plays in this game porter larson Okay. Okay. You, hey, money's been taking the top off uh, mm -hmm. last couple of weeks. You saw that that one from Bryson Barnes. That was huge. beautiful throw too. And yeah, it was a great throw by Br Bryson. But for for him to have a guy out in open field with that kind of speed, man, that's a confidence builder for a quarterback mm -hmm. who's stepping in in a high pressure situation without many reps. That's huge for Bryson Barnes. And, and Money Parks is, obviously has that speed. Uh, Jalen Dixon as well, taking the top off. Um, Utah, that, that's the one place where, you know, they they could improve a, a little bit more is, is, is hitting that deep ball and, and keeping those DBs on their heels a little more often, right? And, and I, I think you're going to see more and more of that as Money Parks kind of settles in, as, as folks have to uh, focus on Devon Vele a little bit more. Obviously, if Dalton Kincaid's in the game, that brings everyone into the middle of the field. It opens up the outside a little bit more. Uh, but but yeah, money money's been been great as of late. His speed is a game changer, and I just like to to see him and Jalen Dixon more involved down the field. If you can get that deep threat going, whew, that run game really starts to turn, and that offensive line really starts to to mm -hmm. you know, assert themselves. And, and that's what you want to see, especially against a, a team in Arizona who they're not bad, but. Uh, their defense is yes yeah <laughs> so, so if you if you can do that against them if you can open it up and and get some confidence building that's that 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 bodes well for you going on down the season maybe a, a little bit of a momentum build going into stanford oregon colorado if i set the over under at this game for two and a half explosive pass plays and what i'll define that as is over 40 yards that something utah hasn't done this season but this defense as we mentioned if you can get that against them. Would you take the over or the under? Uh, two and a half. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over. There we go. I would too. I, I love it. Because I think without Brant Keithy, without Dalton mm -hmm. Kincaid, without a few of your running backs, mm -hmm. you're going to have to, right? You're going to have to, to see the uh, quarterback, Cam Rising, hopefully air yeah. it out a little bit more uh, than he has over the course of the season. And as we mentioned, a team in Arizona who's allowing 37 plus points per game perfect opportunity to do it. Now, they do have a, a pretty veteran, pretty experienced group of defensive backs, but you know, they they don't have that four-man rush. They don't have uh really much ability to get after the passer. So, if the offensive line is 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 playing up to par, which you look at the last 3 weeks between Washington yeah. State, UCLA and UC, USC, those are three of the top 15 pass rushing teams in college football. Oh, true. So you go into Arizona with a real opportunity, I, I think, for this offensive line to, to kind of settle in, uh, create a pocket for Cam Rising and give him time to throw the ball downfield. And as you said, maybe open it up a, a little bit more for some of those explosive plays. And just really get the confidence up. I think this is the kind of game where the Utah offensive line, if they do what they're supposed to do, should have a really fun film session on Sunday where they are. It's kicking back. You're cracking jokes because you almost everyone grades extremely high, which is something that right. we've seen some guys grade high, but really overall, we haven't seen a, a week where the entire group is graded high in certain aspects that maybe pass protection. Yes, but especially in the running game, we haven't seen that. And because of the weaknesses in those front in the front seven of the Wildcats, it's a great opportunity to do so.
Yeah, uh, we, we talked about it a lot, right? Arizona allowing almost Utah's average this year. Utah's averaging 40 points per game, and that's that's about what teams do to Arizona on a weekly basis. We saw it with USC last week, but as we've talked about and as we saw with the USC game down in the desert, they can put up some points too with Jaden Delora, one of the more prolific yep. Pac-12 quarterbacks in recent memory. Yeah, you're going to put up points if you're Utah. I, I think they're, they'll clear their season average at 40 points, but you got to keep – keep Arizona off the board as well. I think this Utah defense is more built to stop Arizona than they are UCLA or USC. I think they'll have more success with that. Uh, and, and that's going to be the, the decider in the game. I think Utah will will have 400 plus yards, 40 plus points. And, you know, if, if they can even slow down Jaden Delora and the Wildcats, they, they shouldn't have much issue. Although, I do think they'll get theirs as well. Arizona's going to move the ball. They'll they'll get some possessions to 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 you know seventy plus yard drives, and they'll get in the end zone. Uh, Utah just has, has to bend, not break a little bit. Yeah, I talked about it on yesterday's show, and a, a perfect segue by you, by the way. We were just about to go in the defense, so well done, taking over as host right there, taking us into it. Um, I do agree that I think we're going to see. I think Utah's offense is going to have a really productive day. I'd be surprised if they don't score 14 points in the first quarter. I do think we're going to see a very back and forth where one series Utah forces them to punt, also will force some turnovers, especially with Jaden Delore willing to take chances, eight interceptions on the season. But I do think we will see some of those plays on the outside through the air, the Wildcats, because it's a really good receiving core as well. So they're yeah. going to be able to make plays there and do some positive things um before we dive into this game too much one thing that is going to be missing for the first half for utah is rj hubert and i do want to give you some credit because coming into this season you came on this show and you were talking up rj hubert and man he has lived up to the hype and they're going to really miss him in the first half sioni vaki is going to come in and do a good job at safety this isn't a game i feel like you absolutely need him out there as much as let's say like the oregon game but just what have you thought about rj's play this season is he and has he even surpassed your expectations for him yeah, well, RJ's RJ's potential has always just been based on his availability, right? Yeah, he, he's a guy who's been in this program for four years now, right? Uh, mm -hmm. A whole career's worth. Yes, and going through multiple knee injuries, multiple ACLs, it's just good to see him out on the field. And yeah, I was high on him because we've seen what he can do in a lot of spring games and in a lot of uh, you know maybe maybe smaller reps here and there we've seen flashes of what rj can do and early season we saw his ceiling right we we saw him in the first three or four weeks of the year he was he was causing fumbles he was getting picks he had the pick six uh he was one of the only guys in division one football that had a forced fumble or recovered football and an interception yeah. in the first four weeks of the year and he's he's kind of come back down to earth a little bit re in mm -hmm. recent weeks some of that has to do with being a little banged up some of that has to do with obviously uh the penalties right you, you got to be on the field and you can't get those targeting calls if, if you're going to be productive but yeah rj's rj's been good it's, it just keeps getting better and better as the season goes along and and the underrated part is he's one of those veterans that knows the scheme inside and out right there's a lot of young linebackers a lot of young guys in the front seven who rely on Clark Phillips who rely on RJ Hubert to to call out coverages to call out certain things uh pre-snap right and RJ Hubert's one of those guys that, that does that really well and yeah man I I think they're going to rely on him a lot going forward and and his reps are, are really pivotal but you mentioned Sione Vaki Clayton Isabel as well yep. you'll probably see those guys get get some run in the first half versus Arizona. Uh, but yeah, come second half, it'll be good to get him back because uh, you can never have too many DBs, too much speed out on the field when you're facing Jaden De DeLora and, and Jed Fish's offense because they're going to they're gonna throw it and they're going to throw it a lot. They are going to throw it a lot. And I think because Utah is able to, to build a lead in this one, I think that's going to be one of the turning points is the play of this Utah secondary making plays late in this game. I think they'll get, if I set the over under at two and a half interceptions, what would you go with for Jane DeLore? I'm going to probably go under on that. Okay. Um, I like he, he'll give you opportunities. He will, yep. he'll, he'll make some dangerous throws, but he'll connect on some of them too. Right. And, and while he will give you turnover worthy, worthy plays, um, he's also good and he can, he can fit into some tight holes. Right. So, uh, maybe one or two, but yep. I, Jim Delora doesn't throw three picks in a game very often. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you go back and look at his career, how many times he's done that. It's not a lot, 
then again, this this Utah defense uh-huh. is among the best in the nation at creating turnovers, at creating interceptions. Uh, top five in the country in the last five years in interceptions. Uh, top ten if you if you go back to to this year. So yeah, Utah is the team that they can force those plays. It can force those ints. Clark Phillips had three on his own a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but yeah, Jaden Delora, you're going to have to force him to do it right, and that, uh-huh. that's where Utah's front four. Who were much better last week against yes, Washington. Yes, one hundred percent, much better. Getting pressure with four, right? Delora's last team in Washington State, Utah, kind of kind of bullied them up front. Mm-hmm. Now their old line's not good, so yes. so Utah pushed them around. Can you do that with Arizona? Can you can you cause havoc for Jaden Delora if you can? If you can get him off his timing, right? Get him off his cadence in the in the pocket. That's when he starts to throw across his body. That's when he starts to to try and go across the field, and and you know, that's when if you're Utah, you gotta you gotta kind of smell both blood in the water. And hey, if you can get three, uh, you're gonna win that football game against Arizona. Because if you if you give Cam Rising in this offense three extra possessions against this team, they're gonna put up fifty. And you're right, Jaden Delora is a very good quarterback, but also very good quarterbacks a lot of the times don't play, tend to play very well in Rice Eccles, that crowd, that atmosphere, that defense teed up, ready to go. And I do think he throws three interceptions in this one. I think guys who are going to get those picks, I'm going to go Clark Phillips. We haven't seen him get one in a while. I do think he'll take at least one away, especially because I think Jaden Delora has the confidence in his receivers to test them against Clark. And usually that's a mistake, but I think he's going to try to. I also think we're going to see a guy in Zamaya Vaughn who hasn't gotten one yet this season. I think he'll cash in on one. And for the last one, I'm going to go RJ just because I think it'll be fun. He'll get in the second half. He's going to get the interception late that seals the game. And I really think we're talking about what a job by the secondary. And in, I mean, just go shifting into game predictions as well for this one. I think the youths are going to dominate. I think this is going to be, I think I said a 52 to 28 game because I do think Arizona is going to score. I think it's really a 52 to more 21 game. I think that last touchdown comes really late kind of against the second unit but i really expect us to be really impressed by this utah team and look at them and go this is the team that has everyone in the fan base believing they can win a pac-12 championship still yeah well i'll say this uh if we see a utah team at full strength right if we see that's true very good point Mm -hmm. uh, if we see a a mckay bernard or a tavion thomas uh i think things change a little bit um right and and if we see Bryson Barnes again. We may see a, a little more timid offense like we saw last week against Very Washington true. State. But yeah, if if Utah's off and clicking, if if they've got a, all the all the the working parts in place, I, I don't see them being held under 40 points. I do think mm-hmm. uh, they win this game by multiple possessions. I don't know. I have an exact score prediction: 45, 21, oh. 45, oh, there 17. It is probably what I what I would say, and and. Uh, and go from there. But yeah, if Utah can handle their business, if they can get pressure up front, I, I really don't see them having much trouble with this one just because of uh, Arizona's defense, honestly. I, I think what Jed Fish uh-huh. is doing early on is good. I think this team's going to continue to to kind of climb. Uh, they're going to they're gonna pass ASU in the next two or three years as far as the, the Pac-12 hierarchy goes because of where that program is at right now. And I do like Jed Fish at the helm, but yeah, I do too. Mm-hmm. right now their defense, man, it's it's yeah. not good, right? So for Utah, a, a team with a, a top 11, 12 offense in the country as of today, uh, I, I don't think they'll have an issue with it. And yeah, multiple possession, multiple possession win for the Utes. Yep, that line 17 and a half for the Utes. Both our score predictions go above that. So you know we're riding with the Utes in this one. So take that line if you guys are going over to Bet Online. And if you want to cash in on some of the other big games with Bet Online, stay with us because in just a second, we're going to talk about those. But first, I want to talk to you guys about UCCU. UCCU is offering a 15th month savings certificate with an incredibly high APY of 4.00%. Plus, you can jump up to an even higher rate of return anytime during the life of your certificate. Guys, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but interest rates and inflation are both on the rise, as if we haven't noticed. Well, here's some good news. UCCU can help you use this current rise in rates to your advantage. For a limited time, once again, UCCU is offering a 15-month savings certificate with an incredibly high APY of 4.00%. Savings certificates can come up huge, so make sure you guys head over and cash in on this offer at uccu.com to learn more and get your savings certificate today once again this offer only stands for a limited time so uccu is offering a 15th month savings certificate with an incredibly high apy of 4.00 percent and a variety of term options to match your specific needs 
UCCU, love where you bank. So Porter, we're going to jump back in now and talk about some of the other big games this week because we said we expect the Utes to take care of business. And look, there's a lot of other fun games. And I think the first one you got to start with is the number one versus the number three team, Tennessee taking on Georgia. Georgia is favored by eight in this one. And that's too much for me. I don't know if Tennessee is going to be able to go into Athens and get a win, but that line is too much for me. I just love what we've seen from Hendon Hooker so far this year. And look, I mean, Steps and Bennett's no Hendon Hooker, but he can still do some nice things. And obviously this Georgia roster is loaded with talent. I think this is going to be an incredible game that comes down to the wire. And that eight points is just too much for me. Oh yeah. I'm not touching that line. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't necessarily know that Tennessee goes in and wins. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if they do. They, they, I mean, they've been the best team in college football so far, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at least if, if Third number one. And, and college football playoff committee uh, said as much on Tuesday. But, yeah, eight points. It's in Athens. I'm still not touching that line. I think that game yeah. is decided by a field goal or, at the very least, a late touchdown. So anything more than seven or e even three, uh, no thank you. Yeah, it, it just feels like it's going to come down to one of those incredible finishes, just like the Alabama-Tennessee game did. So it'll be a fun one to watch. Also going to be a fun one to watch is kind of one I just feel like not a lot of people are talking about just because of how things have kind of gone on throughout the season is Clemson at Notre Dame. And the line's only three and a half. So you can tell Vegas is already kind of interested in staying off this one. And Clemson is favored there. DJ Uyunglele actually got his first uh, – he didn't start, actually. He finished the game against Clemson when Trevor Lawrence got hurt um, and got the big win at Notre Dame. I think the tables turn this time. I actually think the Irish upset Clemson in South Bend. I know it's crazy, but I think every, the committee, everyone's all in uproar about Clemson's ranking. And I think the committee is going to look really bad after this one, because I think this is the first huge win of the Marcus Freeman era. And I think they really come to play. And DJ just has a rough game in this one. Interesting. I, I don't see it that way. I think, yeah. I think Clemson, I think Clemson with that number four ranking, they get a little juice. They get a little, uh, a little calm and they hear the noise right they hear that no one likes them at four <laughs> yeah no no and, and that's bulletin board material if you are clemson i don't think clemson's a, a playoff team by the end of the year yep. i think as you go along in the acc run i think uh as you go along uh through the the, the course of the the rest of the regular season i do think they drop a game i don't think it's going to be against notre dame i, I do think they get this w i think they they cover that that small spread but um yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see a competitive. Notre Dame's a different team at home, and they've been playing a little better uh, yeah. as of late, right? It, they've been winning close games, though. So if they do get it done, man, it, it's going to be a, a tight one. It is going to be a tight one. You know, I'd say they have a good win against BYU, but I don't know how good of a win that is at this point anymore. So either way, going on with our next game in this one, Alabama taking on LSU. Alabama favored by 13 and a half. That's a lot. But you know what? I really like Nick Saban and this Alabama team as usual. So I'm going to stick with the Tide in this one. I actually do think they win by two touchdowns. I think Brian Kelly, I think Jaden Daniels doesn't have the type of game he's hoping for. And I think because of that, the Tigers are going to go down in Baton Rouge. I, I think Bryce Young's going to have another outstanding performance as well. I just feel like a lot, not a lot of people are talking about Bryce Young right now. And I think he's going to remind people that he did win last year's Heisman. Yeah, and as we get into November, this is when you start to to really see the the where you won it last year, right? Right, and yeah, it's it's where you see the the pretenders and the contenders kind of separated. Yes. I think LSU is trending in the right direction. I think they're you know they're they're oh. obviously in a better spot than they were early in the year. Uh, but yeah, Alabama's just uh, on a on a level above them at the moment. It's going to take some time for for Brian Kelly, and even then, I, I don't know how high I am on him long-term in Baton Rouge. Yeah, um, I'm not either. I'm the same way. I, but yeah, I, I think Alabama goes in and handles business. I I don't know. I don't, I don't like the two touchdown spread just because just because you're, you know, you're in Louisiana, you're, you're in that, in that environment at that stadium. I don't know if I touch that spread, uh, but I think Alabama goes in there and gets it done. Yeah. I feel the same way. Should be another fun game. Even if, Alabama does take control of it personally, as you kind of mentioned with Brian Kelly, I'm just not a huge fan of his. So I always enjoy seeing him lose as well. Another fun game, Texas at Kansas state and Porter. I'm still honestly deciding over this one. So I'm going to throw it to you first line in this one is two and a half in favor of the Longhorns. That's an interesting one. Cause Kansas state, I mean, there's been no inclination that the Texas would be the, the favorite team there outside of, you know, being the home squad. Ah, uh, I don't know. Honestly, that's a toss up one for me. Uh, I, I do think that the Texas is, is trending in the right direction. 
Um, yes. I, you know, they got that, that CFP ranking uh, on mm-hmm. Tuesday, but Kansas state's been really solid. They, they, they haven't wowed you necessarily. They've just been consistent. I think they continue that. I think they win this weekend and, you know, Texas just as quickly as they snuck into the CFP rankings. I think they're going to, they're going to drop out next week. Cause that's what it's been in the past, but maybe it's cause one of my friends used to play at Texas, but I'm going to take the Longhorns in this one. I do like what coach Sarkeesian is building down there. I've always been a huge fan of B. John Robinson and look, Quinn mm-hmm. Ewers, I think coming off some tough performances, I think, or excuse me, not tough one most week, or was it last week he had the multi-interception game or was that the week yeah. before? I think I yes. Week before. Yeah, week before. Thank you. Yeah. So coming off of that game is I think he continues to trend upwards. And I think him and the Longhorns get it done and get a huge road win that for once in these rankings, because it feels like it hasn't been the past few years, they actually validate being placed inside the top 25 and continue to rise. So last one we're going to do here, Porter, is a fun one in the ACC. Wake Forest taking on NC State. Wake Forest favored by four. And this is a tough one because it's at NC State still. So I'm just going to ride with the home team. I think when you're this close, this even, I'm going to stick with NC State. Look, I mean, what Hartman does for Wake Forest is a lot. So I could definitely see them going in and getting the win. But I think just because it's at home, I'm going to ride with the Wolfpack. Yeah, I think I think NC State gets this one as well. And if if they lose, I, I do think it's a, a late field goal. You know, I think they they get that that three and a half, four, four point spread. Uh, but I really like what what NC State does. Their, their scheme defensively makes games tight and it keeps yeah. things close. That's why I think that spread is, is tough to, to hit. Uh, I think they win this football game. If they don't, uh, I do think it's a late, late field goal that decides it. So going to be a fun one for sure. Just as all these big games are once again, appreciate bet online for sponsoring our big game bets. But of course we know the ones you guys are the most interested in is Arizona taken on Utah and Porter. If people want to get a little bit more information before the game on Saturday, where should they tune in to listen to? Yeah, pregame show, ESPN 700. Uh, you can hit us up on the, the Sirius XM feeds as well or uh, on the app ESPN700sports.com. 1.30 p.m. is when we kick off pregame coverage. So you have literally all day, 1.30 wow. until probably, I don't know, 11 or midnight of Utah football coverage. Uh, I'll be hosting with Nate Orchard from the Utah Red Zone. So if you're up on campus, come come say hello and, uh, yeah, get a preview of Utah football, Arizona. Uh, Bill and Scott will take over at 3.30 with Sly and then 5.30 kickoff on on the station. You have post-game too, right? Uh, Bill, those guys do the post-game interviews. You've been there long enough. Yeah, yeah, I've been been working since early on and and four hours before kickoff. So I'll I'll always be covering the game online, maybe doing some some digital interviews and and what there. Always Um, always some good stats. At at Larson ESPN on Twitter always comes out with some good stats as well. So make sure you guys head over there and give him a follow. Absolutely. I'll have the the coverage there. But yeah, post game with with Bill Scott and Sly. Always appreciate Porter dropping by on the show. Porter, make sure you avoid any contact on the sidelines this week as well. We want to have you on for the rest of the season. So make sure you stay upright. That's two weeks at home in a row. The, a couple weeks ago, Makai Bernard ran me over on the sideline, and then uh, the USC game before, Cam Cam headbutted me after his two point conversion, <laughs> broke my microphone. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna step back. I might even uh, just hang out in the press box if if the weather's inclement. Hey, I'd be down to hang. I'm always down to hang with you up there. So it might not be a bad call. Should be a fun one. Hope all you guys get out there for it. And also, if you're looking for a second listen every day, make sure you check out Locked On Sports today. We always thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every day. But for that second listen, head over to get the biggest stories in sports. Sports go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insight only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Enjoy the weekend and enjoy the game. We'll see you next week on Locked On Utes.